Hello, people of the YouTube universe, and welcome back to the B3DP community on the Bushido 3D channel. In this video, we will be assembling our E3D V6 hot end, which means that this is part two of our series on the E3D V6. And I would highly recommend that if you have not yet seen part one of this series to go check it out very quickly. Links in the description down below. And that will just be so you have a better understanding of what we are doing here in this video. So without further ado, let's get straight into the assembly. Alright, so first, just to give you a quick overview of what we're going to do here, just chronologically, we're going to be assembling these four main components, our nozzle, our heat block, our heater brake, and our heat sink first. And then from there, we're going to install our heater cartridge and our uh, thermistors, and then we'll get into more of the detailed wiring in the later parts of this video. All right, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and grab your 0.4 millimeter nozzle and your heater block and you're going to choose the side that has these two holes in it and then the one main area and you're going to want to hand tighten your nozzle into this area and then go all the way down and so once you get it to a point where it's just barely flush you're going to want to grab it on top like this and then just make a quarter turn outwards so that should look like about that much the next step is to go ahead and grab your heat break. And then with your heat break, you're going to put in this separated side in behind the nozzle. So on the other side of the heater block that has the one hole on the side, you're just going to hand tighten this in. It's very, very delicate. So just tighten it until it comes up right against the nozzle. And maybe I'm, I'm gonna remove mine a little bit, put my nozzle a little bit farther in. And once you have it about perfect, it should look something like that. All right, so the next thing that you can do from this point is either go ahead and install your heat sink, or you can go ahead and install your thermistor or the smaller heater cartridge. So since I'm going to actually use the heat sink compounds on the top end of the heat break, I'm not going to install the heat sink for a couple more steps. So taking your existing setup, you're gonna want to take your thermistor, and if the nozzle is on the top side of the heater block, you're going to want to insert it to the right, and then don't let it come out all the way, make sure that it's flush. And if you want to, you can tighten the grub screw a little bit beforehand, but right here, I'm just going to put it in right afterwards. It's just a little bit easier. And then I'm going to take my Allen key, and tighten it down, but don't force it all the way. You just wanna have it nice and tight because this heater cartridge on the end of the thermistor will warp really easily with the grub screw. So make sure to be careful with that. Now we have our thermistor installed. We're going to go ahead next and install our main heater cartridge. What you want to do next is with the nozzle on the top head, of the heat break, you want to insert the heater cartridge to the right, like so. It will be a little loose, and even when you screw it down, actually the first time I tried this, it was still a bit loose. So what you have to do is you have to take a flat tool, such as these flat pliers, but you are supposed to crimp this area to tighten it down. So I'm going to have these red wires vertical. Um, and then you want to have your heater cartridge halfway in between. So I finally got the heater cartridge where I wanted it and it's nice and tight. So I'm just going to finish tightening down this screw here. Do not be afraid to torque it a little bit at the end. So I would say now that I am satisfied with the work that I have done in installing this heater cartridge, because I've definitely put enough pressure on this little area right here. And what I ended up doing was holding the entire heater block down on this side, almost pushing it together while screwing in this little M3 with the Allen key. And that ended up working because I tried it a couple other times and after a little while, the heater cartridge was slipping out. So now we can just go ahead on to the next step, which will be installing our heatsink. 
So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little blue tag. I'm going to remove it. I don't think I'll be needing it unless I'm storing this, but just keep it just in case. Now I am going to use these heatsink compounds, and then I'm going to go ahead and apply this compound around the top of the heat break. Hopefully you can see that. That should definitely be enough. Just gonna spread it around. Okay, now we definitely have enough of this heat compound, this thermal compound, onto this part of the uh, heat break. So I'm going to put this to the side on a paper towel so it doesn't get everywhere. And then I'm gonna take my heat sink and then just gently work it down on the heat break. Now you might have to do this a couple of times because yeah, there's a lot of excess on that part of the heat break. And I'm just going to make that hand tight. Again, the heat break is a very delicate piece. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that excess that's underneath there that you can see right there. And then we will be right back. All right, so we cleaned up all of our thermal compound off of this bottom part of the heatsink. And that should conclude the main part of the assembly of this hot end. However, now I'm just gonna quickly show you how to assemble the fan so I did go ahead and install the fan and the fan shroud onto our hot end, but I just wanted to do that off camera so that I can make this pretty straightforward explanation just a bit more brief. And so the first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you align the wires on the actual fan in one of the top positions along this non-uniform part of the fan shroud right here because that will be the part that is facing upwards towards the heat sink and this way it will allow you to have your wires out of the way or have no chance of touching the lower uh, heated components but also your fan shroud will be positioned in such a way that you'll have more airflow towards the bottom portions of the heat sink which will get hotter. Once you make sure that you have everything lined up you want to uh, make sure definitely that you have the label side of the fan face down because the airflow is directed this way so if you're facing the fan and the label is on the front, it will blow towards you. Pretty self-explanatory, but then just driving your four screws, make sure all your wires are organized the way you want them. Personally, I like them all to the left side or to the right side, just so that I can use a zip tie or something later to organize everything. So at this point, if you want to start tightening things down, you should do so. And for the shorter two sides of the heater block, use a 16 millimeter crescent wrench and that will fit uh, just fine. And the nozzle, which is about seven millimeters across the hex, you should use a seven millimeter wrench if you have access to one, but if not, a 930 seconds inch wrench, which is about 7.1 millimeters, will work just fine. Well, anyway, I think that should wrap this up for the assembly, but I just want to talk about what we will be doing in the next video really quickly. So obviously this video was the full-on assembly of this E3D V6 hot end, but in the next video, the part three, the final part in this E3D V6 video series, we're going to be installing this onto our Robo 3D R1 Plus. But no worries to you that have a different printer because a lot of the steps are actually very similar. Uh, the only thing that will be really different will be the integration of the hot end into your extruder system. We will also in the next video talk a bit more about this Bowden setup and we'll also review some of the accessories such as this silicone sock which I personally really like. Alright so if you enjoyed this video please make sure to leave a big thumbs up down below. Also if you have any thoughts or suggestions make sure to leave me a comment I would love to answer your questions. And please remember to subscribe to this channel as it sure does help out a lot. Okay thanks for watching go make something awesome and I will see you in the next video.